Ladies and gentlemen, I had the pleasure of meeting Andrew Gloss in person at the Libertarian Party of Florida State Convention earlier this year and to hear him speak virtually at the Libertarian Party National Convention in Orlando just a few weeks ago. And uh, it was an honor to meet him then to see that he is doing such great work as a new candidate. Ladies and gentlemen, Andre Glass. <laughs>
So what do you think you can practically accomplish? I, I'm not familiar with, you know, what what the county commission, obviously, I don't know, in Seminole County has, a, you know, authority over or, you know, membership structure. You know, what are your, you know, concrete, reasonable, you know, policy promises that you feel you can make to your constituents? Oh, that's a perfect question for sure. And uh, to give you a little insight, uh, Seminole County government uh, consists of five elected commissioners. Each one represents a specific district, but they are not single member districts, meaning that the whole county votes in a large capacity. And uh, over, and as I said, over the years, we're just seeing a lot of the same old, same old. One thing I really want to do is really trim the fat because uh, we really should be able to do more to preserve and enhance our quality of life without the need to keep raising taxes. And raising taxes has been our county governments go to for every single possible problem that has been faced or at the same time there's so many avenues of of uh, abuse of our tax dollars like the seven hundred forty thousand dollar flea world fleece as in let's give a big hand out to a developer to redevelop the property only he then resold it and walked off with our money we literally got fleeced mm -hmm. by the county government and uh so going through the budget line by line really we need to just trim the fat because our county commissioners should not be giving themselves raises while at the same time raising our property taxes and that's why one of the reasons i was the very first candidate to sign the taxpayer accountability pledge to not raise taxes because i believe that we can appropriately reallocate the resources we have so that way we can better upkeep our infrastructure and so little tiny, tiny issues like a little pothole on Reinhardt Road doesn't necessitate having to completely repave the road halfway into its design life. It's just irresponsible right there. Well, uh, Andre, are, are, are you telling me that government is a criminal ripoff even at the county level in America? I'm, I'm shocked. I, I hope this isn't news your constituents but what what i think is surprising about your campaign and there's there's one really you know beautiful aspect about this it says on your website throughout his childhood and adolescence andre worked hard to overcome numerous challenges as the result of a diagnosed condition called asperger syndrome and i'm fi finally i'm like a libertarian candidate who has Asperger's, finally, we have someone who can really accurately represent our movement. Uh, with all kidding aside though, fighting, as, as the website says, fighting through professional therapies, social obstacles, and bullying in school, Andre's difficulties were offset by his strong analytical skills, drive to succeed, and an aptitude for observation and curiosity. And obviously this is, you know, a kind of politician website biography sentence but there's a beautiful vulnerability in including this at all on your website and i gotta say yeah that's thank you for doing that but also i want to add you know is there anything else you want to say about that to, to, to our audience today and and i want to ask really how has this been relevant in your campaign and how have people responded to this? Yeah, well, it's helped me. My experiences growing up have helped me become a more receptive, compassionate and understanding person. And it's really helped me with being able to foster positive, constructive dialogues across all sides of the aisle and building that positive community rapport. Um, I'm trying to do what I can to be a fierce advocate on the issues. And at the same time, letting people know, hey, this is what I went through. And I'm not going to necessarily roll over and be bullied. I'm going to stand on principles. And uh, rather than being tr trying to be another partisan politician, I'm going to keep working hard and achieve what I've, and continue to achieve what I've already been working on for the community, which is building a leadership that is well deserving for the people of this county. And in the end, uh, my advocacy has already led to the county government re-implementing its Citizens Academy program, which they eliminated, ironically claiming that there wasn't money for it. And I'm and my first thought was like, how is there not a resource available for citizens to know how their government works? I mean, that should be a basic principle. 
And my involvement in this race has already led to that direct success. And I'm already bearing fruit for the community. Community members see I'm staying on top of the issues. And uh, in the end, I'm not trying to let anyone define me because I take a personal vested interest in everything I do. I built the entire website, all my graphic design, all my social media posts. Everything I do is just authentically me. And that's my narrative. It's my story. It's my journey. And I'm bringing that for the betterment of our community. And I've been working full time in computers and customer service for 10 years. Actually, I strike that 11 years. I got my first job right after my 17th birthday. And that quote you had right on the screen just now is absolutely the truth, because indeed, a position of civic leadership is the most important customer service position of them all. And I've been working in computers and customer service for 11 years. And uh, my guiding principle is give that proper, direct, and comforting level of service for the community and trying to change our system of governments one step of its, uh, one step at a time directly from within. And that's by winning a position of leadership and giving people a positive voice, a positive force to potentially vote for. And I'm going to earn all the votes I'm going to get for all the right reasons. Wow, man. Wow. So beautiful and, and profound. I really want to go back to the, the first part of your answer there. Because you, there are, you know, and, and to, to make fun of libertarians as, you know, as, as autistic, is 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 a cliche that is somewhat founded in in reality you know it can't can't really deny that as a movement we have that streak to to, to some extent you know and I, we don't have to pick that apart but the bigger trend and what you said of well my challenges have made me more compassionate and empathetic as a result it's not just libertarians and autism on the internet, right? This is so much more profound for the entire human race because what you just said suggests that people who don't listen to libertarians because they're going to make fun of how we're saying what we're saying, right? You know, when, when I get it, like as, as a veteran who has seen people die in combat, Sometimes I get emotional, of, you know, talking about anti-war issues, they talk, co covering the evils of war. And, and, and I hear people then be like dismissive of me. Oh, he's siding with the left because he's anti-war. Or look at, you know, he's, he's being emotional. Like we, he's not being, he's not being rational. And, and, and what, the, what, what people are doing, what humanity has a tendency to do is when people are presenting uncomfortable truths is to attack the messenger in order to ignore the message. And those of us who have experienced challenge in our lives and been victims of the system, whether it's war or autism or poverty or whatever else, it, victimization by the police state, the the criminal justice system, family courts, whatever it is, you know, I, I describe the movement of, of libertarians as the, the downtrodden, the victims of the system. We are more likely to challenge the status quo than the captains of the football team and the cheerleading squads, right? So to say, well, as a result, what, what is the result? We, are, we have become more compassionate and empathetic as, as a result of these challenges. And when you dismiss us, you are really dismissing compassion and empathy being brought to the conversation in a meaningful way that can be manifest in real policy. Andre, uh, any thoughts on the bigger implications of that? Well, absolutely. And sadly, it seems that uh, the way that our political parties have been set, especially on the Democratic and Republican side, Many people feel beholden or feel that the way that their party is presenting their means to an end is the only possible way. And we need to have more constructive 
and positive dialogue with one another to be able to achieve these goals. And our nominee, Dr. Joe Jorgensen, uh, when addressing the state, she was absolutely spot on that we need to be able to have more out of the box, creative thinking to develop more constructive solutions for the problems affecting us. And uh, one thing that I'm really happy to see is uh, a local business owner, Chantel Williams, has uh, fostered that type of spirit by hosting every Wednesday night. Uh, it's called Talking Taboo at her locally owned restaurant in the heart of downtown Sanford. And right now she's actually going on another record setting 48 state motorcycle ride within 30 days and so she's going to be back sometime next month but uh, um, she has these open dialogue where anybody can feel comfortable talking about anything ever, ranging from politics religion sex anything that would otherwise be considered taboo if you will and then people are able to develop uh, different viewpoints, people are able to converse with each other, people are able to de to develop and continue to build on their understanding of these topics in a civil and comfortably open social setting. And we need to have a lot more of these positive dialogues with across party lines because uh, Democrats are concerned the Republicans the enemy, Republicans concerning Democrats the enemy, and then both of them are considering libertarians the enemy so much that they'll team up to try to keep us off the national debate stage. And yeah. at the same time, if many of the common philosophies that our society has adopted today originate with support from the Libertarian Party, and of course, over the past many years, I mean, it's been a slow and steady race, but the tortoise beats the hare. And that's exactly what the Libertarian Party continues to do right now. And this is an important reminder that we are not supposed to be each other's enemy. And the Libertarian Party platform directly resonates on that direct focal point that we need to work together as a society. We are a complex society of, of many opposing viewpoints and differing viewpoints, but we all need to be able to come together and move forward and make positive progress as Americans to achieve the results that we want to achieve for our society. And of course, it all starts not necessarily in Washington, but right here at the local level. Because in the end, our city and county commissioners are making those direct decisions as it relates to your immediate quality of life. What's gonna be built next door to you? What ordinances or what restrictions are they trying to put onto your freedoms? How is your tax money being used and of course, what are you paying every time that you go to the grocery store or to the gas station? You're being charged sales tax, not just to the state, but to the county as well. And citizens need to be able to have that more direct impact, that more direct involvement and empowerment and these kinds of decisions as it's being made in their hometown. And of course, this is a major step, a libertarian victory here especially in the heart of Seminole County, a microcosm of the nation uniquely split as a one-third Democrat, one-third Republican, one-third independent NPA or other candidacy, uh, other uh, affiliation. Mm. It's going to set the groundwork. It's going to set the political landscape for this nation as a whole. And I'm going to keep doing my best to represent the party, to represent this community, and to do as much good as I can for our nation through this political candidacy, which is an experience that I'm greatly, greatly honored to be a part of. So Andre, right now, whatever you want to call what we're going through as a nation, and I don't mean to say that we're not going through something globally uh, with COVID-19, but certainly in the United States with the forced unemployment crisis, the coming eviction crisis, uh, Americans out of work, uh, struggling, getting to the end of their savings, uh, a lot of them right about now. It, it's uh, one way or another, it's uh, the racial divisions and, and, and everything else, uh, politicized polarization on top of that. It's undeniable that we are in a unique historical period right now. What do you make of that bigger situation? How does it affect people in your county? 
It's really pains me to see a nation and a community divided by many of the, these things. And it's sad that people would be, that many of these important causes are being geared in conflict with one another. I believe that we need to work together to be able to defend our quality of life and to achieve forward progress. And indeed, it all starts at the local level. And uh, I'm glad that here in Seminole County, at least, that uh, responsible policing and racial equality go, can go hand in hand, and that we're able to maintain that positive dialogue. And that uh, when the Black Lives Matter protests, of which I was uh, had the privilege of being a part of a few weeks ago, when they took place in our community, not one single act of violence from either protesters or law enforcement took place in our community. It, and uh, right now, fear is what's really being stirred up in the hearts of millions right now, as it relates to COVID, as it relates to many of these ongoing situations. And I'd say, do what you can to try to, to tune that out, because just think for a second. I mean, all these different media outlets, all these different governing bodies, and all or across our country and around the world are all giving contradictory and conflicting information. And so really the best course of action is take it upon yourself, do what you feel that you need to do comfortably to ensure your safety, just be mindful and respectful of others around you because sadly there are people that are genuinely in fear that people without masks are going to kill them essentially because of all the different information that's being presented about COVID-19. And what, what pains me more is that people are focusing so much on the toxic pro-mask or anti-mask argument, people are completely overlooking the fact that the company that built the unemployment system used in the state of Florida, which has faltered so severely, had actually gotten a one about $1.5 million in handouts from my county's government and from the city's government. And people are just going at each other. It's okay to have differences of opinion. It's okay to be pro-mask. It's okay to be anti-mandate. But yet we need to be able to have that civil, honest discussion. And a lot of people are upset about the fact that, in, especially in my county, that the decision was not necessarily made with involvement of our elected officials and from the community, but from an appointed emergency manager who is not really beholden to anybody. One of our current commissioners try to actually represent this type of this current situation as an extended hurricane and that the government needs to be able to do whatever it can to protect everybody. Well, this is probably the longest running hurricane in the history of Seminole County that I have ever seen. And the main thing is they call our current government structure the Seminole County cartel simply because of the way that we have establishment incumbents that have been that are either backed by the establishment or being in there for such a long period of time because of the current lack of term limits that they have really consolidated control. In fact, the incumbent in the seat I'm running for actually is, has her best friend running as my opponent. And everybody talks about quid pro quo. You wanna know a real quid pro quo? Is the incumbent trying to help her best friend win her seat and in return that best friend helped her become the new chairwoman of the expressway authority, which is of course, even now voting to keep spending more of our tax dollars on building more roads for what particular reason? I mean, the I-4 ultimate project is just adding toll lanes to I-4 and spending $6 billion to conceive a way to take more of our money away. I mean, yeah, there's yeah. just so much of responsibility going on. And I wanna just, I wanna be able to get in there, put a stop and make government do what it was meant to do, work for the people, provide essential public services, and stay out of our lives at where it doesn't belong because we need to start 
building these stepping stones on making our nation more free in our lifetime. Beautifully said. You are absolutely correct to point out that they might as well be telling us, here, fight over masks so you don't notice how much we're stealing from you. What's your mask policy? Well, the county government uh, indeed is current, currently has a mask mandate enacted, but I think personally, I take it upon myself voluntarily out of courtesy and comfort for those around me. And I, I'm not sure exactly what's going on with COVID. And I feel that I should just do on my own what it takes to make myself feel comfortable and feel protected in the public environment. And it's really about what is socially desired in our society as we continue to move forward. It shouldn't necessarily come from government in position, but basically on individuals and business owners to do to take action as to what they feel is most prudent for the defense of their customers and defense of the individual body, because individual autonomy is something that uh, as this whole situation continues to progress is something that is being badly neglected or forgotten about. And here's the thing, even before this mandate came into being, and even in areas where there aren't mandates, businesses are taking it upon themselves to require face masks. And as a libertarian, I respect property rights and know that is the right of the individual business for mandating what they choose to and choose not to allow in their place of business. Similar to the whole that whole bakery situation, a private business owner had elected to do what they wanted to do in their private business. And so right now, even without a actual mandate, many of the big chains and many of the local businesses are choosing to require it. Of course, we ask that these businesses be mindful of the fact that there are people, including personal friends that have underlying conditions that would prevent them from being able to wear a mask. And of course, we need to make sure that those individual rights are also still being protected as well, because uh, in the Libertarian Party platform, it specifically says right there that we are to do no harm. And so, of course, the whether really it's something that I'm OK if government is presenting facts and recommendations, I'm not OK with blatant impositions. And that's, in fact, one of the reasons why my employer, who was a former chair of my party's affiliate, is actually suing the county and uh, and these suits are taking place all over. But we're not trying to say don't wear masks. That's the narrative that many of the pro mandate people are trying to say, I'm like, we're not trying to take away masks. I mean, I like bless all the people who have jobs right now manufacturing these consumer products and do the high demand. They're able to keep a roof over their head. Bless all the small, medium and local business, uh, large businesses that are able to keep operating. But, but here's the thing. When you have companies right now in my county and in my state that are being denied the right to operate, even though they are able to take responsible and appropriate precautions that the government decides, hey, let's use one example of a poorly run neglectful business and use that as an excuse to close all these other local bars and local establishments that have been diligently following social distancing and making the extra steps for disinfecting their premises and making their, their uh, customers be comfortable and safe in their environments, that is, a blatant example of abuse by our government that's taking place right now. And that's what many people are currently overlooking. And we need to do a better job of staying aware of what's actually important right now, which is jobs are being lost, lives are being ruined, people are being put on the street at the hands of your government. Yeah, now, Andre, there's only one thing in there that, that I would really have to disagree with. And I, I do think that, that if you're proactively wearing a mask, that that is contributing to an atmosphere of fear unnecessarily. But no, I, I take more or less the same position that when I'm around people who are scared, if they're asking me to wear a mask, I'll, I'll wear it out of courtesy regardless of whether I think their fear is rational or not, just out of respect, right? But you said you're okay with government 
presenting facts and making recommendations. No, I don't want to get my facts from people who face no consequences for being wrong. I will take a slightly more libertarian position than you on that, but I get I get your point that that yeah, absolutely like the local control something. and the local expertise, and we don't need like the thing is from Washington, they're presenting so much conflicting and contradictory information that people don't know yes. where to turn and really he really every county and every municipality is different. And that's why I'm saying it's better to have to stick with the local representation and being able to confide with local leadership versus being just watching every other thing going on. Because in the end, every county is different. Every state is different. Every municipality is different and handling it in different ways. And uh, I believe firmly that local representation, it's okay to, for there to be recommendations, but I adamantly oppose the use of executive mandate power to restrict the rights and liberties of the citizenry. Beautifully said, Andre. Your website is andreforseminole.com. Uh, I really recommend everybody check this out. Sign up for his list. Throw him some money if you can. Candidates like this are not able to do what they do without at least a little bit of financial support from people who believe in this message and want to help them get it out there. Andre has been doing a great job as a candidate, obviously representing this message well, but also getting out, connecting with his constituents and represents a unique opportunity for the libertarian movement and party to have an impact with this race. Andre, thank you so much for your time, your wisdom, your courage, your insights today. Any last thoughts or other ways that you want people to be able to get in touch with you? Absolutely, Adam. And uh, one thing I do want to emphasize also, and as you said, that not every individual in the country or even within the party are going to agree 100 percent on everything. But in the end, we all have to be able to work together with that positive dialogue and maintain that constructive focus to make positive impacts on our communities and on our country. And uh, I, one thing that really made me sad earlier on is uh, not only seeing the factionalization in our own country, but also seeing part of it with our own party. And we need to move past the toxicity. We need to stop all the infighting in our own communities, within our own party. We just need to work together because progress cannot be achieved unless we do so. Beautiful. Thank you very much. Once again, the website, andreforseminole.com.